coming up on City Spotlight. The focus is on Charleston. In the first segment, we'll talk with the mayor of Charleston, Dr. Brandon Combs, and Charleston City Manager, Scott Smith, about the latest economic development in Charleston, plus upcoming public works projects, and the latest additions to the Lake Charleston area. Then we'll talk with the new president and CEO of the Charleston Area Chamber of Commerce, Jessica Killo, about her taking on this new role with the chamber and upcoming chamber activities, including the third annual Tour to Charleston bike race. Today, the focus is all on Charleston, here on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. And welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we're back in the studio after several episodes on location. And in this episode, we are talking all about Charleston. And we welcome back to the program Mayor of Charleston, Dr. Brandon Combs. Brandon, great to see you. Uh, it's good to see you again, Ramin. Pleasure. And we welcome back Scott Smith, City Manager, Manager of Charleston. Scott, pleasure as always. Oh, glad to be here. We had you guys on at the start of 2018, so a full year since we last talked. And let's catch up on, let's get right into it and talk about uh, the latest businesses that have come about in Charleston over the past year. So where do we want to start? Well, I made a short list for me and hope as always, and the mayor and I joke about this, that we haven't missed anybody, but but uh, based on the tallies that uh, Steve Pamperin presented at our last annual retreat, we had Casa Del Mar open up in the former uh, Panther Paw, and they uh, relocated that bar business back over onto the west side of the building. Ryan Strange is working on a new meat market up on the square, and he's, uh, he's elbows deep into that project and also has acquired the CTF building and is uh, in the process of doing some light demolition in that location. There was a Christian Academy open uh, up on the north side of town, the Taste of Course Chicken restaurant there, and the uh, former Marco's Pizza at Family Video opened up this past year. Uh, the True Buds opened up uh, True Blood Boutique, which is there in the Jimmy John's uh, location at 4th and Lincoln Avenue. Sweet Teas opened in the uh, uh, Little Campus Village, right there uh, in the Ike's uh, uh, Campus Village, uh, uh, Kirby's uh, um, Strip Center there. Uh, Wildcatters uh, opened up recently over on 18th Street, uh, which is just north of uh, Eastside Package. Lens Nails opened up in the um, Strip Center out by Walmart. Uh, Help at Home also opened in that location. Dr. Smoothie is in the process of hopefully getting opened uh, in the uh, strip center there just uh, across the street from the credit union. And then Flynn's Dip and Fry opened at North uh, at 9th and Lincoln. Uh, Smallhorn Law Office opened up this, uh, this year. Uh, they're on the north side of the square. Uh, Prairie Lifestyle Mercantile opened on the west side of the square. Highway 17 opened temporarily in a location on the north side of the square, and that's being converted, I believe, over to Grandma's Place that's relocating from Greenup up to Charleston uh, sometime soon. So that's the list I have. I'm sure I missed somebody, but uh, that wasn't intentional, but trying to just give you the best uh, short list that I can. It's kind of a long list. Yeah. But thank you for, yeah. for, for providing that. And Brandon, uh, this obviously is, uh, shows continued interest in Charleston. Yeah, and that's what we obviously love, and that's what uh, our goal has been. You know, since uh, I took over as mayor, and even before that, you know, we're, we're always trying to attract people to town. Um, it just, uh, and we've seen, gee whiz, what well, Scott over the last four years, we've seen so much growth. It's just, uh, it's just amazing. And then last night at the council meeting. Um, Sarah Bush, we passed that their new outpatient surgery facility, a $13 million project that they're going to be, be doing as well. So Sarah Bush is continuing to expand as well. So, I mean, just, you know, that all this brings more jobs to the city, more things to do uh, when people are here visiting, uh, EIU parents and, and even the students. There's, there's a lot more uh, that we have to offer. So it's just, it's just fantastic. Right. What, what I think is great about it too, and I'm sure the mayor's touched on this in the past and maybe in the radio show with Jeff, but a lot of those that I just listed there are all locally grown, locally owned businesses, and I think that's great. 
Fantastic. And to our audience at home, we are taping here in the first part of March uh, 2019. So thank you for that update of, of the new additions to Charleston from the economic development side. Um, this may be a short answer from you guys, but I know you may be at liberty of, of what you can or cannot say. But uh, what are what are some avenues of economic development moving forward that you that you guys are eyeing or, or would like to see potentially come to Charleston? Well, as I mentioned, there's a couple things going on in the square um, that are in the works right now uh, that are far from completion, but are are underway at this point. I mentioned a couple of businesses that are in, you know, in, in various phases of construction there on the square, which is exciting. Uh, so we'll have a couple of new businesses hopefully pop up there on the square uh, in 2019 or early 2020. Uh, there's a couple developments on Lincoln that the mayor and I aren't able to discuss, but there are a couple of uh, projects that are uh, in the works for existing business locations along Lincoln Avenue, and, and we're optimistic about those. Some are a little bit further along in the process than others, um, but we can't talk about them until we get an actual permit in place and a permit approved. And, and again, we always like to let the business owners, because we feel that that's their place to notify uh, the various media and, and, and put public notice out or through social media or however they choose to do it, uh, or give notice to the city they're okay with us releasing the information. So we're a little early in the process, but hopefully we'll be in position here soon to make some announcements. Yeah, we, I mean, Lincoln, uh, there's a lot of interest in, in Lincoln. And, uh, you know, we've done some work uh, along with Coles Together to change um, some things along there, our enterprise zone, and that could, you know, help potentially bring even other businesses along Lincoln right now. Um, the enterprise zone is for industrial only along Lincoln, right. and uh, we've uh, requested, you know, to change that to help help with businesses. Um, you know, so we saw Century 21 build the new place, and they put um, uh, shelter insurance in there with Chris Clayton. So hats off to them. That building looks great. Uh, it's cleaning up another empty, you know, empty spot. And then there's a few others in town. And I can tell you that we definitely, you know, work on it and, and are constantly trying to get these these empty spots filled. So okay. Thank you for the update on that, and and uh, to be determined, the next time we have you guys on, hopefully we'll be able to get some more information from yeah. you on, on the newest stuff then. Absolutely. Uh, let's get an update on Lake Charleston. As we talked about last time, at the start of last year, you guys were uh, just a few months off of uh, the Hometown Award that you received for the, the awesome work you've done at the Lake Charleston area and the trail work. Uh, give us an update on on what's kind of surfaced in the last year there at Lake Charleston. Well, I think when we were together last time, we were sort of nearing completion with respect to the playground project and the and the new pavilion. Of course, the pavilion was uh, soft opened, if you will, back in September uh, of last fall, and we didn't make a whole lot of announcements with regards to it being open to the public or open for a rental, uh, because again, we had a major construction site just to the west of that with the new playground. And so, um, you know, believe it or not, December rolled around and we were able to open uh, most, about 75% of the playground to the public. And again, it was a soft opening. We didn't, we didn't do anything publicly. We just said, you know, pretty much put the snow fence up around it and said, okay, uh, enjoy it. And, and believe it or not, we had a couple of really nice uh, uh, weeks uh, in December and a lot of the families <laughs> found out and, mm -hmm. and uh, were out using it in December um, and have been using it all winter long. Uh, we've got a little bit more work to do there around the playground. We've, we've, we've installed a new sidewalk and an access and some railing, and we've got to finish up some parking areas and some road work, and then we've got some landscaping yet to do, uh, some fence work, and then uh, we need to get the, uh, the new zip line opened up as well. So a little bit more work to do. Unfortunately, the winter was not kind to us, and we weren't, be able to, we weren't in a position to be able to do much work out there this winter. It's just been really cold. Uh, colder than it's been historically in the past and we've been able to do quite a bit of work in the winter and we just weren't able to do it this winter. So our guys have already been out there uh, when we've had some breaks here in February and in, in, in first part of March, although it's been cold the last 10 days, yes. uh, it looks like things are going to turn for the better maybe this weekend and so hopefully, hopefully we can get back out there next week and wrap up a few things. And like I said, we've got some road work to do. Uh, we were able to get the barn repainted and refurbed last year and then the next big phase is going to be what we call the Dam A project, which is going to encompass uh, that dam that exists between the Alex Russell Memorial Pier and the boat ramp into what everybody refers to as the lake. It's really the reservoir, but that's what they refer to it as. And that's going to be a total, total transformation of that segment 
on top of Dam A. There'll be improved parking, new sidewalks, a boardwalk, a shore wall down into the lake, and then we're going to uh, cap that off with uh, a new boat dock and boat, boat ramp access area uh, that'll all start off this summer. We won't get uh, a lot of the work done this summer because some of it involves the um, uh, installation of a shore wall out there, a steel shore wall, and so hoping to get that project ready to go to bid early summer, and that'll be the first phase or first leg of that project, and it will take us into 2020 for sure and for certain. So we'll get some of it done, but um, it's going to be probably a two-year a two project at, um, at, at the earliest. All right, very good. Brendan, your family is an avid user of, of the lake trails. I know you're very, still very proud of uh, what Charleston achieved with the work that you've done there. And again, it's continuing to evolve. So it's, it's, it's uh, yeah. And I mean, you know, just the ideas that continue to pop up and come and the talks that we have about uh, the lake, it's, it's endless, you know, and then uh, more trails and then we, you know, uh, uh, maintaining the ones that we have because they're so heavily heavily used, you know, there's always work going on out there. And uh, I said this last night at the council meeting, and then I talked to several different groups here over the last month, and, and it still is just amazing to me uh, what trails can do. And, you know, you think about how many people come here and use them, then they may stay the night or they may eat somewhere here or shop here. So uh, it's just, it's great all around. And there's always, always EIU students out there as well. And then um, we were talking last night at the council meeting too, how uh, we keep track the best we can right. when we're out there of license plates. And Steve Pamperin said last night that there's 30 different states now that we've seen wow. parked out there at Lake Charleston. So yeah, 20 more to go. Uh, I don't know if we'll get Hawaii or not, but you never know. So and Alaska too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right, let's switch gears here. And again, great work going on in the Lake Charleston area. Um, it's people are seeing this episode here at the start of spring, so that means right around the corner. Obviously, crews getting out doing public works projects. In the last few minutes, we have here Scott and Brandon. What what public works projects can we look forward to? In well, Charleston? obviously the lake is a public works project, right. and so our crews will be very involved in again wrapping up work that we got started and couldn't finish on the playground and the road over near the playground in the new pavilion area. We've got lighting work yet to do, and then we're going to be installing a traffic safety beacon system down at the bottom of River Hill. So that's phase one. They'll obviously be starting on the Dam A project, as I mentioned, and then crews are going to be busy with typical sanitary and storm sewer work uh, in and around the community. Uh, and another big project is our RLF sidewalk project. Our street department crews will be very busy installing new sidewalk and that'll be the primary focus for that department for the next couple of years. Also, uh, from what I've heard and from Brandon speaking uh, with uh, on a radio program not too long ago, obviously there's going to be some uh, work on Lincoln Avenue in Charleston. What can you guys tell us about that moving forward here in 2019? I just talked to Kurt Busher yesterday, and uh, of course that is a project that is uh, administered, handled, and supervised by officials in IDOT, but Kurt and I have been working very closely, well really Kurt, um, with, with the officials from IDOT. We, we have an excellent working relationship with IDOT, and those folks are working very, very hard uh, to get this project ready to go out for bid this spring. Uh, we're optimistic that this will get packaged up and be ready to go to spring. Uh, and hopefully get contractors in there working on Lincoln Avenue later this summer. That's the goal, and we're hopeful that that's, uh, that's, that's going to be how that's all going to pan out. So it would be really nice if, if the project could get let and we could get contractors started again, um, you know, late summer, early fall, so we could see some new asphalt on Lincoln Avenue. But again, that is all tied to a very specific and very stringent schedule with IDOT, right. and so any missteps along the way that are out of our control could or might delay that, but we're hopeful that that won't happen and that we'll be able to get workers on the project this summer. And for our folks at home, remind us when the last time Lincoln Avenue was worked on to a certain degree? 99. It's been worked on, you know, as far as patching and, you right. know, supplemental repairs here and there and degree. traffic signals. To but degree. to this degree, it's been a, a real long time. Yeah, yes. I'm pretty sure it's 98, 99. It's been 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is a sophomore at EIU, so it's been <laughs> it's a number of years ago. So keep, keep an eye on that, folks in Charleston. In our last minute or two here in our next segment, we're going to talk with the new... Uh, CEO and President of the Charleston Chamber, Jessica Killo, and can you guys, whatever you want to say, either one of you or both of you, uh, to a degree of excitement to have Jessica on board as the new uh, President and CEO of the Chamber. Well, having, I'm a, I'm a uh, board member by position on the, uh, on the Chamber Board, and, and we're real blessed to have 
Jessica in that role. She stepped into that role in early January. She comes to us from the YMCA and she had other experiences in the Chicagoland area prior to, to coming back home. And uh, Jessica's just full of energy. She's got a lot of great ideas for the chamber. Um, you know, that's, uh, you know, and we're very early here. She's only been in the role for uh, a couple of months. So she's obviously learning the organization and checking in with our members. Uh, but she and the board have some really great and exciting plans for the future and, and we're just really happy to have her on board. So I look forward to working with her. She's already been over and been talking with our staff, working closely with Steve and Alex over in our planning department and helping us to recruit and retain businesses and, and attract new businesses to town. And, and through our alliance and our partnerships, as the mayor mentioned, with Coles Together and the Chambers uh, in Coles County and uh, with Coles Together, obviously on the, on the economic development side from an industrial perspective and some of the changes the mayor mentioned with our enterprise zone and some of the incentive programs the city's approved, I think we're spot on for trying to attract new business and certainly retain business, but attract new business to town, so. And yeah. like all the people sitting here right now, Jessica's also from Charleston. Right. Yes. Very good. Yes. Gentlemen, that's all I have for this uh, this portion of the episode, and we'd like to thank uh, the Mayor of Charleston, Dr. Brandon Combs. Thanks for having me. And the Charleston City Manager, Scott Smith. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you on again. Thanks, thanks as always for having us. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. And coming up next here on City Spotlight, we'll talk with the new President and CEO of the Charleston Chamber of Commerce, Jessica Killo. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Charleston. And we're back here on City Spotlight, this episode on Charleston. In this segment, we welcome our first time guest to the program, the new president and CEO of the Charleston Area Chamber of Commerce, Jessica Killo. Welcome to the program, Hi, Jessica. Hi, thank you for having me. Jessica, this is not your first time in the WEIU <laughs> studio. Jessica was no. a part of a former WEIU produced program, the Four Rivers Ag Report. So welcome back to the studio. Thank you, it's nice to be back. <laughs> All right, very good. Set looks a little bit different, it, if I recall. Does, yeah. All right, very good. Uh, glad to have you on, you're a first time guest. Can you? Tell our audience a little bit about yourself, please. Yes, absolutely. So um, as we've talked about and kind of hit up upon, I am a Charleston native. So I went to high school here at Charleston High School and graduated and came here mm -hmm. to Eastern Illinois University. Mm -hmm. Graduated with a degree in communication studies mm -hmm. and had the opportunity to work with some wonderful businesses. I started off at the University of Illinois Extension Office right. where I did our Four Rivers Ag Report, right. and I worked in their marketing department for them. And then I got a wonderful opportunity to move up to Chicago and mm -hmm. work for a not-for-profit doing marketing and events. And right. I was there for a couple of years and, you know, I loved it, but I found myself coming home every opportunity that I could. I would come home on the weekends, I would come home on holidays, I would take a vacation day to come home on a random Wednesday. Um, and so I just decided maybe it was time to move back home. So I came home and was so fortunate. I had taught uh, Zumba at the Mattoon YMCA right. and I contacted my director and said, do you have any openings for fitness instructor? And she goes, yes, and we have a full-time opening too. And so I was brought on board to be the marketing director. Loved it there, spent a little over a year there with just some of the most wonderful people. And then I had the opportunity to come serve the Chamber of Commerce and here we are. Very good. We've we've uh, had the Matt Blake Fairchild from the Mattoon Y on a few times yes. talking about the new Y in Toledo. I so watched it. <laughs> very good. Um, and now you're here at this role in the Charleston Chamber. Obviously, Cindy White was the, had the position for a number of years. Um, so how did you get? In, how did you get from the Mattoon Y to this position? So that is kind of um, a, f a funny story. I have known several of the local business leaders just through having been here, having shopped here, developing bi uh, business relationships and personal relationships. And so when this position came open, one of the board members who was not on the search committee actually sent me a Facebook message and said, this screams your name. Um, if you can't, I'm a very social person. And so he said, this, this would be a great opportunity for you. And I said, oh, thanks, but no thanks. I love my job, I'm not looking. Well, then I had another friend who served on the board, not the search committee, but on the board. And she said, 
hey, I really think that you should apply. You would be so wonderful for this position. And um, kind of did the same thing. And she said, let's just go meet up for coffee and talk about it. And sh the way that she presented the chamber and what I would have the opportunities to do, it just seemed just so such a good omen in a way that that here here two people of the board are coming to me and saying this seems like something you would enjoy laying out the list of what I would do and I just thought you know what it doesn't hurt to apply so right. I applied and it was a wonderful process everybody was so welcoming and and I was fortunate enough to accept the position. Great backstory. You had the vote of confidence of some people there and you went forward with it. Yes. And so as you told our audience, you're a native of Charleston, you're serving in this position in your hometown. Yeah. Must make you feel really proud to be holding this position in your hometown. It, there is a large amount of pride that goes with this position. As I said, I, I've known so many of these businesses growing up. I frequented them. The new businesses that are coming into town, it's so exciting and I think being able to be a Charleston native and have that excitement really lends itself to, to the chamber. All right, very good. We'll get your thoughts here on Charleston businesses in just a second, but you're stepping into the chamber in, in a uh, magical year. Uh, not only is this the 100th episode of City Spotlight, it's the 100th year it is. of the Charleston Chamber. It so, is. So you, yeah, wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. It's it's mind boggling that we've been around for 100 years and it's so exciting to, to get to step into this role at this time. Okay, so tell us tell us, um, tell us us about the Chamber and, and what are some things going on. I, we'll, we'll obviously talk about the, uh, the bike race, obviously, but uh, you have an event that's uh, kind of related with this 100th yes. year. Yes, so last year, um, Cindy White and Jordan Landek, who had previously been at the Chamber, mm -hmm. started this wonderful event, and it was a Chamber Trivia Night. Mm -hmm. And it was just really a place for anyone, th for community members, businesses, to come out and just enjoy a night of fun hosted by the Chamber. And so we're doing that again this year. It was such a well-received event, mm -hmm. but the theme this year is 100 years, and so um, it will be trivia through the decades, and I'm so excited for it. It's trivia questions from as early as the 1920s to as recently as the 2000s, and it will be so much fun. It's Saturday, March 30th, mm -hmm. 7.30 at the Moose Lodge. Tickets are only $10 a person. You come, have a night of fun, okay. and we've got some really awesome prizes. Okay, very good. We're, I'm gonna hold off for just a second here talking about the bike race, but thank you for sharing that upcoming oh, yeah. event there. Um, your overall thoughts on the Charleston on Charleston businesses. Scott Smith in our previous segment listed all the new additions of the past year. I'm not gonna try to remember <laughs> the exact order or what they were and sure. and uh, your overall thoughts on, on Charleston's economic development right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. I think that given all the new influx of businesses coming in, you can really see that people are excited to build this community and grow this community and, and come here and establish a name for themselves. And I just think it's such an exciting time. Our current businesses are growing and they're doing so much to promote Charleston as a whole and the community and I listened to the tail end of Scott and Brandon's interview and you can hear them talk about all the developments that they're making within the community and I just it's so exciting and so thrilling to be a part of it and I do know that our, our businesses are loving this growth and I think overall we can see is just more projected growth. Maybe I can if I ask you just another question about just general a general uh, broad question. Sure. Uh, the, the chamber is obviously located up there near the square across from City Hall. Yeah. Um, the downtown of Charleston it has it has evolved over the years a little bit. It's changed through the decades, but. Um, the, the, again, the continued growth and interest of, of the, the square. Absolutely. I think the square is is such a fabulous place to have a business. It's got so much history to it. it. There's a lot of charm and a lot of character. And the business owners down there are really excited for it. And they do so much to help the square blossom. And that's something, too, that the chamber, you know, we're actively involved in is getting our people you know, to, to the places to shop and to eat and to spend spend their money. So a lot of excitement, the current business owners on the square, that's, uh, that's, that's great to hear. So thank you for sharing that. Yes. Excellent. In our last minute or two with you, uh, Jessica, we appreciate your time here on City Spotlight. Obviously a big upcoming event for the city of Charleston and as well as the chamber is the third annual Tour to Charleston bike race. It's amazing yes. how Time has flown by and we're already to the third, so the new tradition in Charleston continues. Yes, and I think that this, you know, being the third event is something that people are starting to expect and look forward to. Not just the participants who come and they ride in the bike race, but the community as a whole. And so this year, it will be held on Saturday, June 1st. Mm -hmm. um, we're actively taking participants, and so if you want to participate, you can go onto our website and register. We've mm -hmm. got a 
12 and a half mile ride, a 25 mile ride, and a 50 mile ride. And then something new this year that we're right. trying is to actively grow it into a broad spectrum community event. Okay. So we'll have vendors the morning of for something for spectators to do, something for the community who maybe aren't riding in the race, but want to come and cheer on, come to that square and see all the businesses. And then afterwards, we're really hoping to work in conjunction with the businesses on the square and again, kind of have um, an event, so to speak, where, where they offer specials at the restaurants or specials at the stores. And, you know, maybe we have some live bands and really just grow this into being a broad spectrum community event for everybody to enjoy. As we've talked with Merrick Holmes and Scott Smith the last handful of times, uh, other avenues to come to Charleston for, not just obviously with the lake, but a uh, third annual, it's still young, but yes. it's, it's, it's made it to the third and continued success hopefully continues to grow for you guys. Absolutely. Uh, in our final minute or two here with you, Jessica, again, appreciate your time today and, and best of luck with the, with the bike race here in, in early June. Uh, uh, your overall excitement for, for Charleston moving forward with your new role again, uh, what else can you say? Absolutely. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. There is a lot of excitement, um, not just at the chamber, but the city as a whole, our business leader, our communities. I think this is just a really wonderful time for us to grow and thrive and continue the excellent work that's already been done. So I'm, I'm really thrilled with this opportunity. We've been talking uh, Charleston today here on City Spotlight, and we thank first-time guests here on the program, the new president and CEO of the Charleston Area Chamber of Commerce, Jessica Killo. Thank you for coming on City Spotlight. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And that'll do it for this episode of City Spotlight, the 100th episode of City Spotlight, and we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.